For years I've been obsessed about building some pretty exotic audio gear, such as plasma speakers, devices which create sound from over 30,000 volts of electricity. But I always hit the same frustrating wall. Sure, I could hear the sound perfectly well, but I couldn't see what the sound was doing. How does it interact with the world? Sure, I could measure with a microphone, but still doesn't give a visual understanding of what is happening across an entire region of space. Well, today that frustration ends because today we're going to be making the invisible visible. Using a surprisingly effective technique called slur and imaging, I'm going to show you how to build a system which can capture a moment in time 100,000th of a second long. That's fast enough to freeze the phase shape of sound itself. To pull this off, we're going to have to solve two fundamental problems. The first is that air is invisible, and the second is that sound moves incredibly fast at over 700 miles per hour. For the first problem we use slur and optics, this mirror and knife arrangement is so incredibly sensitive it can turn the tiny invisible pressure variations of sound waves into visible regions of bright and dark. But the vibrations of even a low musical note happen hundreds of times a second. To a normal camera this will just look like a blur. And this is where we bring in the strobe light. Now if you look at this spinning fan it just looks like a blur. But if we synchronise a flashing light to the speed of the blades suddenly it appears perfectly still. We're going to apply the exact same principle but much faster and more accurate to see our sound waves. Now this trick demands perfect timing, down to the microsecond. A Raspberry Pi is great at multitasking, but not so great at high speed timing. Its operating system introduces jitter, which makes it unsuitable for this task. For that we're going to need a dedicated hardware solution, and that's where our FPJ comes in. Think of the FPJ as our time master. It sends highly accurate voltage pulses to our camera and LED, syncing them to nanosecond accuracy. The FPJ sends out two perfectly synchronized signals. One tells the camera to open a shutter for just 10 microseconds, and at the exact same instant, the second signal tells our 5 watt LED to flash for exactly 10 microseconds, perfectly illuminating the sound wave for that tiny slice of time. Our FPJ Time Master is this RT FPJ board from AMD. Now writing Verilog code for an FPJ can be a significant learning curve and I wanted something that was quick and easy to get up and running. So for this project I experimented with Google's new AI Gemini to generate the entire code base for this system, both the FPJ and the Python scripts. The results were fascinating and as something I'll cover in a future video. But of course the code is only half the solution, we also have to connect the hardware. First I modified the camera to accept an external trigger from the FPJ. I use a potential divider to match the different voltage levels. Second is the LED. An FPJ simply can't supply enough current for the 5 watt LED. So we use a MOSFET. Now think of this as a heavy duty, high speed electronic switch. The FPJ's precise low powered signal tells the MOSFET when to deliver the high voltage pulses to the LED. Now these components are all held together by this custom rig I designed in FreeCAD. The design files are linked below. Let's follow the path of light. It starts with our LED. The light is then focused through a precise optical slit made from two razor blades. And the key is that its entire assembly is adjustable so that it can be placed exactly twice the mirror's focal length. On the other side is the receiver, which is the Raspberry Pi camera. In front of the camera is our light block, in this case a tin wire. Using wire increases our resolution instead of a razor blade. The position of the wire is fully adjustable. We need to be able to adjust the position of the wire until it blocks out most of the light coming from the slit. This happens when it is exactly at twice the focal length of the mirror. When all the alignment is just right, the background goes dark and the system becomes incredibly sensitive to any disturbance in the air. So all right, we've darkened the room and our optics are all aligned. And I've placed an ultrasound transducer in front of the mirror. So let's power it on. And there it is. There, those are the actual compression and rare fraction from the sound wave, frozen in time by our flash. Now you can see the wave appears to be rolling, and that's because our sound frequency is slightly out of sync with our camera frame rate. But just like the fan, we can adjust the timing and lock them perfectly in sync. And now that you can see the sound waves, we can start experimenting. Watch what happens when I place a small piece of card in the path of the wave. You can see the perfect reflection, the wave bounces off and travels in a completely new direction. This is pretty cool. And this is why I built this device. It allows me to visualize designs and test things like sound damping and acoustic lenses, which are going to be incredibly useful for future experiments. So there you have it, by combining the principles of Schlur and optics with a perfectly synchronized strobe, 
We've developed a system that allows to visualize the invisible world of acoustics. But this isn't just a fascinating visual, it's a useful piece of engineering equipment and we developed it here using off-the-shelf components. All the code and design files are waiting for you in the description below. And if you found this video interesting, a subscription would be greatly appreciated. And thanks for watching, and now go out there and make the invisible visible.